Maybe you have one of these old cast iron Briggs and Stratton 16 horsepower motors. This particular one lives in this uh, Toro Groundsmaster lawnmower. But yours can live in virtually anything you want. If you think it's having running issues and you believe that it's associated to the carburetor, this video is for you. We're going to take apart the carb, we're going to clean it out, we're going to rebuild it, but with no money spent. That's right, folks. Zero dollars spent to get this puppy purring like a kitten. So if that sounds good, stick around. All right, so um, the first thing we want to do is just get some of this superficial uh, dirt off. The, uh, the grime that's, you know, this is the side that... This side's a little cleaner because it's the side that's always exposed, but the side that's between the engine and the carburetor, there's always, you know, it's a piece of lawn equipment. They always have all this dirt and grime and with the oil it kind of sticks in. So everything is going to be soaking in this container right over here. Um, but in the meantime, if we can get the big stuff off. I mean, it'll just, it'll make it that much easier. So uh, first things first, we take the... Uh, this main jet out down here. It's not on very tight. You can see it's all white. Uh, you know, well, that means that it hasn't seen any gas for quite some time. And then we got the, what do you call it, the pilot or? I don't know. That big long jet that's in there. Make sure you don't strip it because it's real deep. I don't see how you would ever extract it if you were to damage it in there. Now let's try to get some of that get some of that white stuff out of there. So it doesn't damage. And you know what? Let's put a little bit of a little bit of penetrating fluid in there just to kind of dissolve it. Allow it to, to kind of work its way out a little nicer so we don't damage anything here. Still working outside. I have my uh, my flatbed trailer that I was working on. I got to bring it to the inspection, the yearly inspection, and uh, you know it's kind of toasty outside. And in the garage, it's toasty as well. So figured I'd set myself up on the back of the trailer. The only downside is all this traffic. Uh, I don't know what's going on today. Usually it's pretty it's pretty calm around here, but anyhow, yeah, this valve is not cooperating. Try to get a scribe and, and clean out those threads a little better. I don't want to damage the threads. I don't want to damage this carburetor to the point where I won't be able to use it. Hmm, this guy might be a little better. Let's see if it gets all the way down into there. Oh yeah. All right. Like I mentioned in my previous video, the Zenith uh, carb rebuild video, you know, you can't stress, overstress how important it is to get the right, the right tools in there. Because, man, if you strip these things, it's just all this hassle trying to get it out. You're better off taking the time to do it properly. You know, the long way ends up being the short way most of the time. Sort of massaging that that jet back and forth because it starts binding up. When you get towards the end, oh, it keeps coming looser and looser. This technique seems to be working. See, just working it back and forth. This is the first time I've had a jet kind of give me this kind of issue. I think we got it though. I think we're gonna have a, a great success with this one. There we go. To break through all that white, all that white powder. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, see, so look at how crusty this guy is, eh? If we would have tried starting it while it was on the machine, even if it would have ran, it would have been... Uh, would have been a bit of a hassle. Now, the reason why I took that off first is because you see how this guy's really long? You figure when it's in there, it goes all the way up like this. And uh, even further, it goes all the way up kind of like this, actually. 
And if you try to take this bowl off without taking this guy out first, uh, I think you get kind of an interference and you can you can bend this thing because there's little holes and that's like a weak spot. So you can kind of give it a bit of a bend. I believe I'm speaking from experience, but uh, yeah. Now we can take these four screws out that hold the bowl on the main body. And uh, I'm gonna do it quickly. You're gonna see we're almost done. Oh, look at all this crap coming out of here. That's not good. Yeah. That's what happens when a machine sits for a long time. Uh, you, you know, you get all the kind of critters that go in there and kind of make it their own. So, you know, when you're doing this, if you're doing this for the first time, you can take time and, you know, take a look, make sure all your bolts are the same length, which they are, um, you know, but it's always good practice to sort of, you know, everything's always easy when you take it apart. It doesn't really matter. You just start throwing stuff in a bucket and everything's going well until you come to reassemble and you go, hey, wait a second. I didn't realize I had two different lengths of bolts. You know, or which direction did this thing go on? I don't recall. So, you know, everyone's got a telephone, a cellular telephone nowadays. You can use that, take photographs of it or, uh, you know, mark stuff down on a piece of paper, whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. Mm. Come on, come on little fellow. There we go. And now, right before you rip it off, I always like to make sure, you see my gaskets on the bottom. It could be on the top or on the bottom, it depends what side it's stuck to. But sometimes it'll stick half on the bottom, half on the top, and then as you start pulling, you end up ripping it. And uh, if you wanna to try to avoid that, you take the time to make sure that, um, make, you take time to make sure that it's not it's not kind of getting ripped as you're pulling this thing apart. Why the heck is this thing having given a hard time to come off here? Come on. Come on. Whoops. See? See how it's kind of binding on something there? We just got to pull it down before we tear it. Because if we can get away with not replacing. Oh, I see what's happening here. Look at that. The float pin. I don't know if it's come undone or what, but it looks like it kind of bound up. There we go. That should help. Is that happening? Oh. Yeah. Sure. Maybe that, oh, I know. Okay, sorry. This gasket's gotta stay on this side because the float's on the other side. So we're gonna get an X-Acto and we're gonna come and extract it. We're gonna cut along here and make sure that it comes undone. That's what's keeping me from taking it apart. Go get my X-Acto. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and with surgical precision, we're going to try to get this uh, gasket. Okay, see here, this part's already come undone. So let's try, let's try getting the gasket off. You know what, we'll even put a bit of loose nut on there. See if we can kind of get a little, a little softer. And we try to very gently without cutting it. It's a risky operation. Yeah. Naturally, it sticks a little harder where the bolts come in and crush it. That's where it's been compressed the most. So if you can get past those areas, usually the rest of it is kind of easier. It just sort of comes in there. There we go. We got that one out. And this guy. There we go. That guy. This guy's done. That guy's done. This guy. One last one, okay, the last one. Moment of truth, people. There we go. Now you're gonna come undone? There we go. Okay, so, more of that flaky, I don't know, residue. Some gelatinous stuff in there. So that's gonna enjoy a good little, good little soaking. Um, is there anything else to take apart here? I don't think so. You know, this is just the choke. Where's the choke? The choke's kind of hidden away in there. This cap comes undone, and I've, I've, I've heard a legend where this, this thing would come popping off, and then you would burn out your motor, I guess, because you would have too much air coming in, or you'd have sand and dirt coming in. I don't know, but this cap, you can see it's been punched in. Whether or not that's from the factory, I don't know these carburetors well enough, but it does have kind of this big Welsh plug, uh, then here, we appear to have a drain over here, but we'll leave it in. We're not going to be draining the bowl, so in you go. You're going to get soaked, and uh, we'll get the, uh, 
We'll get the float off. Okay. Okay. Float pin. The float. Um, it's nice to see a brass float. You know, when you work on old stuff, you see them all the time, but you know, that's a, the last of a dying breed in the needle valve. This one is a uh, is a rubber tipped, so that's it. And it looks like have, it looks like there's a little rubber over here. Okay, we don't want to disturb that too much because sometimes if you take them out, they, they 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 end up inflating and they won't come back together. This guy we're gonna leave over here. We're not gonna soak the gasket. Um, and my my parts wash is just a mixture of diesel and Varsol, not extremely damaging to rubber. I mean, you know. And we're not going to be leaving it in there too long. So we're going to leave that all there. Uh, oh, we'll get this guy off here. This, uh, this jet will count the number of turns. What do we do? I like doing it in halves. Half. One. One and a half. Call it one and three quarters. So one and three quarters on this top guy over here. Pull him out. And if you notice, I didn't do the, uh, I didn't do that other one down there. We'll uh, we'll do it when we end up taking it apart and cleaning it. All metal, nothing, no gaskets in there. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's get these parts a soaking. Wonderful. All right, so we're back. Uh, this car has been soaking for about the time it took to eat a couple hot dogs and take a 45 minute nap. So let's say about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, we're gonna get them out of this uh, this cleaning solution. Get them on my little tray over here. I got my brush, and uh, you know we're not we're not doing like one of those overnight or couple day soaks because we're really just looking at getting the. Uh, oh, you see this? Look at that. The float floats, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, we're really just looking at getting all the superficial residue off, and I can already see that this guy's looking quite a bit better already. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of this, some of this juice. There we go. Put this aside. We'll take our bolts and the jets out in a few moments, but uh, we'll start off by getting uh, these components clean. There we go. You know, I was mentioning before, brass floats, they're awesome because uh, you can repair them. Uh, you know, they're they're basically just soldered together. So kind of, you know, they can get dented up and they can get banged up, but you can go ahead and uh, and repair them if you must. Um, something that, you know, plastic, their plastic equivalents are not as well suited for, you know, but whatever. You can buy a new one, I guess, in our disposable, in our disposable society. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, we'll keep working on old stuff that we can keep restoring over and over again. We'll do this, uh, this small section next. This brush is a bit aggressive for the, for the application. A smaller paintbrush might have been a little bit better suited, but uh, yeah, it's doing okay. Why don't you guys take a look on fast forward? We'll play uh, play a little bit of music and uh, you know play it at whatever the old 2x or 3x. And uh, I'm gonna cease with the commentary. I'll come back momentarily when this is all cleaned up.
All right, so we're pretty much all cleaned up. Uh, I like the way everything turned out. The only thing that we didn't manage to clean properly is this lower section in here. Uh, you know, we talked about this Welsh plug here. Uh, you know, the only way you'd have access to this choke uh, pallet in here and this this passageway would be to remove this and then you'd have an access in there. If not, you're looking from the top, either here or here, it's kind of like a U shape. Um, and there's a residue, I can see this, this gunky residue at the bottom uh, where the gas probably would have accumulated uh, at some point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, put some actual intake cleaner, like a, just a stronger solvent down in there. If there's any left in my can. And I'll just let that, I'll just let that soup around down there uh, just kind of dissolving whatever crap that I won't be able to access properly and that's going to be good enough so I'll just put this aside uh, for a couple seconds um, we can look at I cleaned up all my screws if you noticed uh, this guy was was lingering in the bottom of my little parts wash so that guy was recuperated um, so that's it yeah so all the jets cleaned up well um, we look at our, our gasket over here. I'm just gonna lubricate it up with a bit of oil and kind of just rub it down. Uh, the gasket's in, in decent shape. It's not, it's still flexible. And uh, you know, if I had a new one, maybe I'd install it, but I don't have a new one. So we're gonna have to use what we got. How's this guy coming along? All right, well, it's a little bit better. Dirty? Oh yeah, so, you know by the color of it, it did manage to get some stuff out, so that'll be good enough. Give a little shot of air. You know, that actually did better than I thought. The, uh, the air kind of cleaned out, really pushed out the remaining uh, garbage, and uh, I don't know if we can see in there. You guys see that? There. And then down in there, well, it's quite a bit cleaner. Good enough for me, folks. All right, um, so put the gasket on first. So top and bottom, I'm not too sure if it makes a difference. A little bit of this loose nut on here. That's what we'll use to clean it and lubricate it up. It should be good enough. Be good enough for this little goat gasket looks uh, symmetrical so I don't think it matters which side we end up putting it on uh, okay this guy here goes in whoops Put this on here make sure we weasel it in perfect get the pin Right, and you know, we like to see the floats. You want to have pretty much, you want this face of your float to be parallel with your body when it's fully closed, which is, that's approximately what, uh, what what we got. Now I'm gonna blow, I like to check my float out. I blow into my, my fuel inlet and I lift and I close and I should hear, I should get a full seal here and then here I should get air passing through. So it's just an easy way to tell. Let's see. Yep, looks good. So that's that's holding. Get this guy here. Uh, am I missing anything else? No, we could put the jets back in when we're there. Um, make sure this pin is properly equidistant on both sides, because if it's sticking out too far, it'll it'll hit up against the uh, the ridge and it won't properly close, won't properly seal. So let's close this guy down, hopefully for a long, long time. I won't be seeing you for a long time, my friend. Hopefully, it's wishful thinking. Get our four bolts back in. Even the stragglers, the ones that try to, the ones that try to get away. Get this guy on. 
There we go. You just want to kind of bump them up real lightly so that they all sort of touch the same and then you go and you torque them all down after. Just like when you put any any two casings together. Try to get it to seat properly. You don't want to just tighten one down and say, okay, I'm done and then do all the other ones. You want to just get them all to seat nicely. Then you come around and you try to give them the same amount of force, always working in kind of a diagonal pattern. If you have four, it's easy, it's just diagonals. If you have more than four, you want to work kind of inwards, outwards. So let's say if you had a whole bunch all the way around, you'd start, you'd start doing a, a star pattern all the way around. One, two, come on, three, mm, number four, all right, here we go, um, we can get this guy in, into those threads, like I said, that long straggly guy has got to get taken out very carefully and uh, where's my proper screwdriver, here we go. And sometimes it can get bent. You can bend it back, but uh, you, know, you still got to watch out. When I blew this guy out also, I checked all my holes. You know, you hold it up to the, to the light and you take a little look, make sure that your orifice is nice and, nice and clean. I really feel as though this guy is like, I don't know if it's warped or something, but these threads are tight. Hopefully we won't have to take this guy apart too many times. Because I feel as though, I mean, the, the threads don't feel fragile. It just feels like, there we go, and the, towards the bottom it kind of seats in a little nicer. Okay. And there's a cap. There's a cap here. It's not a cap, sorry, it's actually a it's actually a little holder to hold that that jet, the bottom jet. I'm not well versed in the terminology of these jets, so I mean I know one is like the what they call it the pilot or the idle mixture jet or the I don't know. I'm used to snowmobiles, you just got high and low. And then we got the big guy going back in. Okay, sorry about that folks, the uh, memory card and the camera just uh, got full, so we're gonna finish this off on my cell phone. So let's do one and a half turns, so I'm fully in, so we go half, one, one and a half. We'll start with that, we'll also do one and a half turns on this guy up here, and uh, you know, we gotta get it dialed in on the actual machine, so uh, this one was what, one and three quarters, eh? Well, we'll start at one and a half, and uh, we'll see, we'll see how that does. Half, one, but one and a half, good enough. All right, so I think we're done with the carburetor. Let's go and uh, get it back on the machine. Let's put it for the carburetor rebuild for an old cast iron Briggs and Stratton motor. Uh, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Signing out.